coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati. Northeast tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. Union Home Minister Amit Shah met leaders of various civil society organizations from Manipur during his visit to Imphal on Sunday. The leaders represented the Maite, Naga, Kuki and other communities from the state. The narrative emerging after this meeting has, as expected, led to different interpretations. The Kokomi Coordinating Committee on Manipur Integrity demanded that Manipur's integrity be left intact while working out a solution to the Naga problem. At the end of the meeting, Kokome leaders said Home Minister Amit Shah has assured them that Manipur's integrity will be protected. This may mean that there was no question of Naga areas in Manipur being integrated into the adjoining Nagaland state as demanded by the NSC and IM and some other organizations. Some may even go to the extent of interpreting it as an assurance from the center that no autonomy would be granted to the Nagas outside the control of the Manipur state government. But the UNC, United Naga Council, the apex Naga body in Manipur, whose leaders also met Amit Shah, feel that only the Nagas can decide on their future not people belonging to other communities. The UNC leaders feel that the negotiation process currently on to resolve the Naga issue must be allowed to work out a solution that is acceptable without any outside interference. Meanwhile, Kokomi has demanded a special status for Manipur by amending the constitution. Kokomi organized a people's convention in Imphal last week and resolved to seek special status for the state. Kokomi stated, that the constitution should be amended for providing powers to Manipur to trade with its neighbors, sharing of profits between the center and state for central projects, and that interstate migration with the state shall be controlled by Manipur state. It also resolved that Article 3 of the constitution should be amended by inserting a provision that any change in Manipur's boundary shall require the concurrence of the Manipur Legislative Assembly. Now the big question is, Will the non maite groups like the Nagas from Manipur back this idea? Well, to discuss the issue, I am joined from Imphal by Mr. Kuraiza Mathoba, Assistant Coordinator of Kokomi. Also in Imphal, I have Mr. Tongmang Haukip, Advisor of the Kuki Ingpe, the apex Kuki body. From Kohima, I am joined by Mr. Eluandang, General Secretary of the Naga Hoho, the apex Naga tribal body. Also in Kohima, I have Mr. Teza Terry, a top leader of the Naga Tribes Council. And at the studios with me is Dr. Javier Mao, professor at the Northeastern Hill University in Shillong and a very well-known commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to Northeast tonight. Now, let me go straight you. to Thank you. you. Let me go straight to you, Mr. Kuraiza Mathoba in Imphal. Mr. Kuraiza Mathoba, a lot of people are now asking the question, does Manipur hold the key to a resolution of the protracted Naga problem. Can we say, will it be correct to assume that Manipur holds the key to an early solution to the protracted Naga issue? Well, uh, <clears throat> Wasbir, I think up to some extent, we can dissect uh, the reason the cause for, you know, uh, holding these peace talks um, in two ways, two reasons. One is the uh, flag and the constitution, yeah. which is not accepted by the government of India. And an another one is the Naga inhabited areas integration, uh, which is not accepted by us. Uh, that will ultimately lead to the bifurcation of the state of Manipur, and that is not acceptable to us. 
So, uh, in some ways, up to some extent, uh, you can say that. Yeah. Okay, let me take this question to Mr. Tongmang Haukip. Mr. Haukip is an advisor with the Kuki INPI, the Apex Kuki body. Uh, Mr. Mr. Haukip, uh, you are a Kuki community leader, but you are also a Manipuri because you belong to Manipur. Uh, you know, how do you look at it? Do you think to a great extent Manipur holds the key to an early resolution of the Naga problem? Uh, it involves the Nagas, no doubt, but do you think uh, Manipur holds the key because Manipur has a large Naga population and there is a demand by some of the Naga groups, the Naga areas should be integrated. Now, the Kuki INP has also made, submitted a memorandum to the Union Home Minister. They said that Kuki groups should not be uh, made a part of the Naga deal. How do you look at this dilemma? Well, uh, the situation is that in Manipur, where uh, the Indo Naga peace talk has been the opposed from many angles because because the Nagas of Manipur wanted integration with the mainland Nagal. Now, that question of integration has been ruled out, but there is an apprehension that, or expectation from the Naga community that a separate, a separate arrangement would be made, alternative arrangement would be made for the Nagas of Manipur. Perhaps the idea is that uh, a territorial council sort of yeah. uh, merging all the dish, uh, Naga inhabited areas of Manipur into one administrative unit and giving them maximum autonomy financially and administratively. But to this, we are not opposed. But the thing is, if Kuki areas are, being mer uh, are likely to be merged with the Naga area, to that, the Kukis are opposed to that concept, that we will not be forming a part of any arrangement for the Nagas, that the Kukis will remain separately. Okay. Now, let me, let me go to you, Mr. Eluandang in Kohima, the General Secretary of the Naga Hoho. Mr. Eluandang, uh, you know, we have discussed this issue on this show many times in the past, but now the time has come for speaking clearly and very directly. Uh, you see, the Union Home Minister in his recent visit to Manipur has very categorically said that Manipur's integrity will not be disturbed. Manipur's integrity will be protected. That is what the Union Home Minister has assured the Kokomi delegation. That is what the Kokomi has been telling us. Now, my question is that of obviously means, the Home Minister's statement may mean, it can be interpreted as saying that there will be no integration of Naga areas of Manipur into Nagaland while working out a solution to the Naga problem. Again, the Metes are opposed to parting any territory from Manipur. Now you have heard Mr. Tongmang Haukip, a very prominent Kuki leader, advisor of the Kuki INPI. He is saying that we have no problem if the Nagas in Manipur are granted autonomy or a territorial council, but we do not want Kuki areas to be part of this Naga territorial council. But now again, Kukis overlap. The Naga areas, there are cookies in Naga areas in Manipur. So for all practical purposes, the cookies are actually also unhappy with the, with the integration issue, with the integration plan. Now, how do you look at it? Do you think the entire key, the key, the solution, the, the, the key to the Naga issue lies in Manipur? Mr. Eluandan. You see, uh, number one, regarding integration, 
Integration is a legitimate demand and legitimate rights of the Naga people. And so if the government of India is not willing to take up the issue of integration, right. then it's obviously there is no solution to it. Number two, no people can decide for the Naga future. Only the Nagas can decide. And you see, there is no question of the Manipuri or uh, Meite holding the key to Naga people. There is a very clear demarcation of occupation in Manipur itself between the hills and the valleys. The valley, valley people can't even obtain acquired land in the hills, which is very clear and which is being uh, followed in the governance. Therefore, the Meites and the Nagas are totally a different people and Nagas have every right to decide our own future. Number three, on the uh, cookies, see, Nagas don't have any problem with any community. Whoever wants to join the Naga people, I think the Naga people warmly welcomes anyone. But if they don't want, if they don't want to be a part of the Naga community, I think they, no one, nobody should force them. But the question of integration remains that the Naga inhabited areas belongs to the Naga people and therefore there is no reason that any other community should come in between and disturb the process. Okay, let me take a quick reaction. I'm coming to you, Professor Javier Mao, and yes. uh, as well as Mr. Teza Terry, but quick reaction from Mr. Kuraiza Matoba. Mr. Kuraiza Matoba, you have heard the Naga Hoho Secretary, General Secretary uh, Eluen Dang saying that, you know, Nagas, uh, only Nagas can decide their future and they do not want any outside interference. And they are saying that uh, there is a clear distinction between Nagas and the people in the valley areas of Manipur. So, does it, the, do you get a sense that, uh, you know, the Nagas uh, uh, from outside, do you think the Nagas in Nagaland also, or Nagas in Manipur, do you think Nagas in Manipur also share this view? Uh, was where, uh, I would like to put it like this. Mr. Elunadang, uh, I think uh, he don't know much about the uh, background of the ethnic communities in Manipur. Uh, what he just said was just a mere political ambition based on a mere political ambi ambition projected by NSN IM. And that, that, that nobody buys that, 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 that political philosophy that the Nagas, the so-called Nagas, the 20 ethnic communities, yeah. which has been, you know, forcibly brought under the nomenclature of the so-called Naga terms, that doesn't have any legitimacy in the state of Manipur, number one. Number two, there is no affinities with the so-called Naga tribes in Manipur and the Naga tribes in Nagaland. So let's be very, you know, uh, let's be very clear on this issue. So the political so ambition. Let me, let me that hold they you there. Want, let me hold you there. Uh, it's you, a different issue. You, you consider yeah. you are saying that the Nagas in Manipur, uh, I mean, I mean, they are they are very much part of Manipur and they don't have any affinity with the Nagas in Nagaland and they are a separate entity. Are you trying to say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me let just, me just give me one, just give me one valid, just give me one valid justification. Justifying that the, the so-called chef, let me give one name, the Anal tribe. The Anal tribe in Manipur and the Angami or the Ao or Shema just bring in one affinities. And okay. you can buy whatever I will, you want I will, to say. That, that, we, we are in a very, up, convince me. Yes, uh, we are in a very yeah. interesting stage of this debate. Let me, I'll, I'll take, a, take an explanation to this from Dr. Javier Mao. But uh, Mr. Eluandang, uh, you have heard uh, Mr. Kuraiza Matoba saying that Nagas in Manipur have no affinity whatsoever to the Nagas in Nagaland and Nagas in Manipur are a different entity altogether. Therefore, the question of integration does not arise. 
uh, how do you explain this? What is your response? See, it was weird. for the sake of talking or arguing, I think we don't need to misinterpret things like this. Let us be clear, let us, be, let us keep the facts that Nagas, how can the, they claim that Nagas doesn't have any affinity with uh, the other Nagas in Nagaland or other areas? I think this is absolutely illogical. Nagas, wherever they are, for centuries, Oh, come we on, forget, together. forget the word we Naga. Expressing our views, we recognize views tribes in Manipur as Anal, Chiru, Chote. So, uh, for now, give one the, example proving that Anals Atoyba, have affinities with Angami. Allow me to speak. Come on. Atoyba, uh, Mr. Atoyba, allow me to speak. I think I have heard you. I think there is no reason to be emotional on this. We are talking, we are putting on across our views and opinions. Let us keep the facts. Let us not yeah, distort things. Let's be logical. Don't mislead. This is Don't not mislead. a time to yeah. distort the facts. No, no, okay. I, I'm not misleading. You are misleading. Okay. I, you, you, I'm if, giving you the If facts. you think that the, the Nagas living in Manipur... Facts. Okay, uh, let us take a view, let us take another view on this. Let's have everybody on the screen. Let's go to you, Professor Javier Mao. Uh, yes. You have heard this debate so far, Mr. Atoba saying, I'm coming to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Teza Theri, I'm, I'm coming back to you, Mr. Tongmang Haukip. Uh, but Dr. Javier Mao, you have heard uh, strong <coughs> arguments put forward by Mr. Kuraiza Matoba and equally strong response uh, by Mr. Elu and Dang of the Naga Hoho. Now, what is your personal view? How do you look at this? Do you also agree that Nagas in Manipur are a separate entity, as uh, Kuraizam is saying? Well, let me tell you what Mr. Atoyba is saying is unfortunately totally, completely wrong, completely misleading. For example, I am Mao at the border of Nagaland. Mao and Angami, Chakasan, even Zeliang wrong. We all form Tenime. We are Tenime, Tenime group. Therefore, Mao, in, uh, Mao people in uh, Manipur is much closer to Nagaland in, uh, ang with Angami than even with Nagaland in uh, Ao or other Naga tribe. Therefore, I'm so sorry to say Mr. Toiba total ignorant. Not only Mao, but even Maram Naga and the Tangal Naga and the Zelerong. They all belong to the Tenime group. We are much, much closer, culturally, even linguistically, even physiologically. Therefore, mm. I'm very sorry that Mr. Mm. Toyma totally keep, ignorant, keep aside, trying to mislead say, Mr. the Mr. ignorant Mao. public. Mr. Mao, let, Mr. Let, Mao, let, let, Atoba, let, let Atoba Mr. respond. Mr. Mao, yes. okay, keep please. aside, keep aside Mao Maram. Keep aside Mao Maram. Just prove me that Anal is a Naga. Just prove me that Anal and Angamis are similar, same tribe. Just prove me that. Okay, uh, let me let me bring Keep in. Inside Mao and Maram for a while. Before before this is a we are in a very a very uh, interesting and significant aspect of the debate. We'll continue with this argument and counter arguments. Let me go to you, Mr. Teza Terry. Uh, Mr. Teza Terry, the Union Home Minister assuring Kokomi that Manipur's integrity will not be affected. This clearly means that the central government is not going ahead with the integration of Naga areas in Manipur with Nagaland. How do you look at it? Do you have a different view? Do you look at it differently? Teza Terry. Yeah, good evening, uh, Mr. Wasbir. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me on the show once again. Uh, generally, I could see the Honorable Hall Minister's visit was a meeting that they had in Manipur was cordial. Hopefully, an understanding must also have reached in certain areas where they have apprehension. As far as integration is concerned, it is our right, a matter of our vision of in the Article 3 and 4, but it has to go through democratic process. And at the moment, it is difficult. And Negotiators also have understood the position uh, may not be an issue. Proposal is concerned. No, 
uh, I'm coming back to you, Mr. Tezar Thiri. Let me once again go to uh, Mr. Tongmang Haukip, uh, the advisor of Kuki Inpi. Uh, Mr. Haukip, you know, the, the Kokomi, uh, the, the Manipuri Civil Society uh, is gen now mooting the idea of special status to Manipur. They're saying that Article 3 should be amended so that Manipur's boundary cannot be altered without a consensus of the Manipur Legislative Assembly. Now, you are saying, you are saying that cookie areas should not be integrated with, uh, uh, you know, any territory or any autonomy given to the Nagas. Now, that means, are you also supporting the Kokomi demand for amendment to Article 3 so that Manipur's boundary is not altered? Well, it's a question of uh, perception by different communities. If the Nagas of Manipur feel that they are closer, they have closer link with the Nagas of uh, Naga mainland, that I do not question whether it's wrong or right, it's left up to them. But as for the cookies, there is a uh, community based organizations which includes all the cookies of Manipur, including the old cookies of uh, Tainopal and Chandel district. Mr. Atoiba was saying that annals have no affinity with the Nagas of Nagaland. I think he's right because the annals are not Nagas in terms of uh, ethnicity. They may be politically uh, bound by uh, certain uh, movement by which they claim to be Nagas. But originally, it is, uh, it is also recorded in all the literatures that Anal, Maring, uh, Aimol, Mar uh, and few others are classified as old cookies. So we find that if the areas inhabited by Anal, Maring, and other old cookies are likely to be merged with any autonomy given to the Nagas of Manipur. We are opposed to that because we want that our brothers, Anal, Maring, and others should be closely knit with the Kuki people. So this is my view. Okay, uh, let me... As far as uh, special status for Manipur is concerned, uh, I do leave it to the Kokomi to demand the right they have got for a special status for Manipur. Right. Now, now Mr. Kuraiza Mathoba, before going to the break, uh, I'm asking you this question. Why are you opposed? What is your problem if the Nagas in Manipur are granted autonomy if the Nagas in Manipur are granted a separate uh, uh, te uh, autonomous council or a territorial council, whatever you name it, uh, what, is, what is the problem? Because in Assam, the Bodos have a council, the Dimasa people have a council, the Karbi people have a council. Every community in Assam, for example, has a council. It is within the state. Uh, funds are given by the central government. So now, do, are you opposed to the Nagas in Manipur getting a special uh, council <coughs> and uh, on special autonomy? <clears throat> First point, we said there should not be any kind of autonomy based on ethnicity, number one. Number two, the intention the intention for the demand for the territorial council or autonomous council for the so-called Naga communities in Manipur, if you listen to the most recent interview given by the General Secretary of NHN IM, Mr. Muiva to current Hopper, he, he very clearly stated that the agreement that reached between the interlocutor, Mr. RN Rabi and NHN IM, for a Naga Territorial Council in Manipur is a, you know, is a transitional measures to form the greater, to form the Nagalim, sovereign Nagalim. That's what he said. So it clearly indicates that, that the, the, the granting of autonomous region for the Naga, exclusive 
in the inside the territory of Manipur will definitely lead to the bifurcation of the state, which is not acceptable because the present political boundary of Manipur is the limit that we have been constricted from our past vast boundaries. It has been expanded up to, you know, as I told you in our previous uh, discussion as well, our boundary has been as vast as it, it reaches Sibsagar, down to Silhet, down to, you know, Chinwin River in Myanmar. But from time and again, due to, you know, certain okay, uh, let me, geopolitical let me, let reasons, me, it has been constricted, right. uh, limited, and the present is, is the your, limit now. Hold your thoughts. Let me bring in Elu and Dang here before I go to the break. Uh, Mr. Elu and Dang, uh, you know, Nagas in Manipur, suppose they have an autonomous council within the state run by under the government of Manipur. You should have also have no problem. Why, why, why should it be a common council administered by people from outside? But would you have any problem if the Nagas in Manipur get a council or get autonomy which is administered by the state government of Manipur? You see, as long as the people's wishes and desire to live as a dignified people is honored, nobody should have any problem. There is no reason why our Meite brothers keep barking on this. Allow the Naga to people to live as they desire, as per their wishes. What, what is the harm and what is wrong with our Meite brothers? Why do they come in between? Why do they act as an obstacle to the Naga people? I think it is time to be realistic. It's time to reason together. Kuraizam, you are the Mete brothers coming as obstacles. That is what uh, they are not allowing the Nagas to live the way they want mm -hmm. to live. That is what Elu Andang, General Secretary Naga Hoho, is saying. Mr. Atoba. Yeah, that's what, that's what Naga Hoho thinks. That's what Naga Hoho thinks. But they never, they never see how we look at it. We look at it in a way that the, 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 the Nagas of Nagaland is trying to, you know, trying to breach in the political, you know, uh, 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 integrity of the state. They are breaching in. They are trespassing in. And that's not acceptable. Okay. Now, yeah. Mr. Mr. Javier Mao, Dr. Javier Mao, the main yeah. fear, what I gather, I mean, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Atoba, yeah. uh, what, from what I have understood from what Mr. Kuraizam Atoba is saying, mm. he is saying that the Mete's fear yeah. that once autonomy is granted to the Nagas in Manipur, that is the first step towards bifurcation of the Naga areas out of Manipur. That is the fear. So how, how justified is this fear? Because uh, if I once again take the Assam example, the Bodos have been granted, their autonomy has been elevated only recently by another Bodo Accord. Mm. It was a Bodo Council, then it has become a Bodo Territorial Council. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. But, uh, you know, there is no fear as such of the Bodos, uh, you know, uh, going out of Assam. Uh, now, why do you think uh, uh, such fear is there in Manipur? Uh, very briefly, I have to go for yes, a break. Yes, sir. Very well, briefly. Well, you see... We are the, just trying to understand, yeah, yeah, the, right. understand the fears. The Manipuri Meites, they are disproportionately enjoying the opportunities and benefits by virtue of being a majority community. So they do not want to give up that privilege, that status quo. Therefore, their argument is purely based on emotion, Irrationality, not based on good reason, good no, no, logic, No, uh, no, that argument, uh, Professor, right. if, if, suppose, assume, yeah. only for the sake of discussion. Sure, if sure. It, you are saying the Metes are disproportionately large population. Right. If the, if, if, if the Nagas go out, yeah. they will continue to be the large population. They don't want the minority group to go out yeah. they, they, because uh, they are saying that this, their Manipuri identity will be shattered because they consider the Nagas in Manipur as an integral part of the state. That is the argument. So how are you saying that money uh, matters? I'm going coming with this question well, you to, uh, to yeah. Mr. Haukip as well. Yeah, yes. You see, the disproportionate benefit that they're enjoying will be lost once Manipur Naga area is integrated with uh, Nagaland state. Or if they are given autonomous council, that benefit, they will get less. And the Nagas or 
Even other okay, I'll, I will, people I will, will be I will, getting after more. The break, I'll, yeah. After the break, I'll come to Kuraiza Mathoba for an explanation. In 20 seconds, Mr. Haukip, uh, do you subscribe to this view which Dr. Dr. Mao said that, uh, you know, the Metes are, uh, you know, enjoying the, this pro disproportionate population. In, I mean, they have got a disproportionately large population. They do not want to uh, give any concessions to the minorities. Is that the feeling? Uh, how do you look at it? Do you have a different view? Well, that... Uh is the general, general feeling among the hill people, the tribals, that uh, in the, even in the assembly of 60 seats, Metis are 40, Nagas and Kukis are 20 only. That means double of right. uh, the tribals. Now, in the area of development and other things, priorities is always being given to the valley, mostly, so far. Perhaps in future, the development priorities may be extended to the hill areas. But as of now, we, the tribals, feel in common that we are being deprived of many facilities which we are supposed to get. So it okay. is the Mete community who are uh, in the larger, uh, in the larger okay, number, got it. they that are is sharing the lion's share of <coughs> Okay. Whatever. Okay. That's that is that is the feeling among the hill people. Uh, less representation in the assembly, less access to political power. Uh, maybe Manipur may require a delimitation of constituencies. Could be a solution. Uh, we will come back to get more responses. After coming back, I'll go to Mr. Teza Terry for more to hear more from him, and also, of course, to Atoba for his reaction. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back, viewers. For the record, let me tell you that we had invited representatives from the United Naga Council of Manipur, the Apex Naga Tribal Council in Manipur, to participate in this debate today. But for reasons best known to them, they decided not to be present in this program, at least for now. Uh, we would extend our invitation to them in the future. Now, let me go to you, Mr. Teza Theri. Uh, the Mete Civil Society, Kokomi, has been demanding an amendment to Article 3 of the Constitution, as I have said before to other panelists, that want Manipur's boundary cannot be altered. The Article 3 should be amended so that Manipur's boundary cannot be altered without the consensus of the Manipur State Assembly. Your response to this, how do you see this, Mr. Teza Theri? Uh, to me, I think it's a fair enough for any ethnic group to uh, ask government of India for recognition. And it is fair enough for any ethnic As far as uh, Nagas are concerned, government of India have recognized our history and our political right. And because of which political negotiation is uh, uh, going on. Okay, now, now, Mr. Teza Terry, uh, now the integration issue is a live issue. It's uh, I'm, uh, the integration issue is still alive. Many organizations are demanding integration. My question to you, Mr. Teza Terry, do you think a Naga settlement should be delayed because some organizations are still demanding integration of Naga areas in the Northeast? What do you think? Not at all. It should not be delayed. It should happen in the earliest, and it should not be delayed anymore. Because it is over. Formal talk is over. There's no reason whatever. Yes, in both solution, we will continue to struggle. We will continue to work through the democratic process to see that our aspiration is met. And it is our right to have our aspiration to live 
together and to bring the contiguous Naga areas under one unit. So this will go on. Okay, now, now, now many people are saying, Mr. Teza Theri, many people are saying that northeastern states cannot be reorganized further <coughs> and therefore integration on ethnic lines is no longer possible. If this is so, in your view, what is a workable formula? What is a viable formula? To me, on ethnic line or community uh, line of uh, integration, it's not an issue here. We are talking about uh, Naga ancestral domain, the areas where the Nagas have inhabited. And it is a matter of our right to bring all this contiguous area under one administrative unit. And it, this is a matter of our right, whether people object, people support, but uh, this issue can go on and even government of India cannot say no because it is a constitutional right. Okay, uh, let me bring in Mr. Elu Endang at this point. Mr. Elu Endang, uh, Mr. Teza Terry of the Naga Tribes Council is saying that it is the right of the Nagas to demand integration of all Naga areas under one administrative unit. But he is also saying very categorically that then any settlement to the Naga, Naga settlement should not be delayed because someone is demanding integration and it is difficult for the government to concede this demand. See, it's absolutely true that solution should not be delayed further. Government of India have entered into ceasefire and have initiated the political dialogue, keeping in mind all the issues that the Naga people have been aspiring for. Now is not the time for government of India to delay things. It is time for the government of India to put everything into place. Now, why should we pick up the issue of integration again? Government of India have already understood the position of the Nagas and why the Naga struggle have been going on for these long years. So now, government of India have to come clean. I think they should not uh, bring in issues which are long been discussed. You see, Elu and Dang, issues have been discussed but not settled. That is the question. <coughs> the integration issue, as you have said, has been discussed. Right. But right. the issue has not been settled. Now, are you going to say that there yes. can be no solution. Are you going to say clearly that there can be no solution to the Naga problem unless all Naga areas in the Northeast are integrated into one administrative unit? Can you give a clear reply, please? Oh, obviously, 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 without integration, there is no solution. Without integration, there is no solution. That means you are saying, Mr. Eluandang, that means you are saying all Naga areas in Manipur, all Naga areas in Assam, all Naga areas in Arunachal Pradesh should be merged with the state of Nagaland or it should be administered by one single structure, one single superstructure. Is that what you are saying? Naga people deserves to live under one administration. Okay. Naga people deserves to live under one administration. He cannot be more clearer than this. I think Elu Andang has given a very clear statement that unless all the Nagas in the Northeast are brought under one administrative umbrella, whether or not the states are reorganized is a different issue. But they should be administered by one single authority. That is what Elu Andang, or that is what at least I have understood from what Elu Andang is saying. Mr. Kuraiza Mathoba, your response to this, that means uh, integration issue holds the key <clears throat> and if that is so, people, obviously the Nagas are going to blame the Manipuris, the Metis. As I, as I told you, Wasbir, as I told you earlier, whatever claims, whatever claims made by the so-called uh, the uh, Naga leaders, those are 
based on political ambitions, which was recently developed from nowhere. So that doesn't have any legitimacy in the state of Manipur, number one. Number two, in our recent uh, meeting, brief meeting with the Union Home Minister in Imphal, he has very categorically stated that no autonomy to anyone, whether it's in the state of Manipur or in Northeast, no further any kind of autonomy. And he even told us up to the extent that you can go and tell to media and to the public that they are not going to grant any kind of autonomy. That's what he has clearly stated to us. Okay, uh, I'll Number come two. to... Yeah. I'll come... I, yeah. I, carry on. Carry on. Athoba, carry on. Yeah. I, I, I thought I should clarify on some of the points that uh, brought up by Mr. Javier Mao and Mr. Alu Nadang in just before the break. Uh, that uh, Meite are enjoying the lion shares and they don't want to lose that share, this and that. Those are all very, you know, uh, to me it's, it's very ridiculous to hear it from, uh, you know, uh, someone from the Mao community. Was we, I don't know if you have any idea about it or not, but the so-called 20 ethnic tribes, which has been brought under the nomenclature of Naga in Manipur, the Tarau tribes, the Tarau tribes is having only 600 to 700 population. The Purum tribe is having only 600 to 700 population. The, the Chiru tribes is just around four to 5,000. The Kom tribe, the, the, you know, the Komrem, they are just around uh, seven, eight thousands. While the Mao comes more than 50,000, they are about to reach one lakh. The Tangkuls, more than one lakh. And they are the one who is, you know, who is suppressing all the small, small ethnic minorities. And they are trying to get that lion share from their own tribe, you know, these small communities. But we are trying to accommodate them. We are trying to give them the rational share rights and privilege. That's why we have introduced the demand for special status recently. Because otherwise, the Tangkul and the Mao, they have been hegemonically undermining all the small, small tribes okay. whose population will, is not will, even 1,000. I have to give... We have to realize that. Right. Uh, Professor Mao, oh, please, yes. please respond yes. uh, very briefly, though. Well, once again, Mr. Toibas... Uh, Statements have no logical basis. Please speak facts. Please speak on facts. Yeah, no lo logical basis, no rational basis, no rationality, nothing. Just uh, an expression of uh, no, no. Emotion. But uh, do you That's deny? All. Do you? He has given some statistics. He no. has he has said that so and so community has 500, 600, yeah. 5,000, 50,000. So that, do do you deny those facts? No, no. That, that part is correct. But just because some of these small uh, tribe have for that small number, what does that has to do with the Naga integration or uh, other issue? I think that, that is irrelevant. But the point that the, about the anal, it is true. From the anthropological point of view, they were included in the old cookie group. But that way, even in Nagaland state, the cookies are also called uh, Nagas and they recognize as Nagas. And if they belong to all cookie group, and if they wish to join the Naga group, should Naga say, no, 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 we don't want you to join? Should we say this? No, that is not a humanitarian approach. Uh, let me let me take right. let me go to let me go to Mr. Tongmang Haukip. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Haukip, you know, do you think problem in the entire this is a general question. This is not related as such to the issue we are discussing today. I'm asking you a general question. Do you think, you know, as someone who has been observing the entire issue of ethnic aspirations, ethnic aspirations in the Northeast, do you think the entire problem is because uh, there is a precedent of granting autonomy on ethnic lines rather than on regional lines? If there should be regional. If suppose a community is deprived or an area is deprived, that particular area uh, should be uplifted. Whoever stays in that area should get the benefits of upliftment, benefits of progress and development. Is that the whole problem? That we are granting ethnic, granting autonomy on ethnic lines, triggering an ethnic turf war. Do you think that is a problem? Well, 
Well, Rasbir, I uh, just want to tell you is that uh, the Nagas of Manipur feeling more affinity with the Nagas of Nagaland rather than the Kugis or Metes of Manipur. That issue is to be dealt on the ethnic line, but integration of all Naga inhabited areas of Manipur, Assam, and Arunachal with mainland Naga, that will involve fragmentation of the state boundaries, which the in, uh, government of India also wants to avoid. Now, if we say on the affinity of uh, tribe or uh, uh, clan this wise, now the Kukis of Manipur have more affinity with the Mizos of Mizoram rather than the Metis because we share almost the same language and customs and culture. But the issue is that once we want to merge with Naga, uh, Mizoram, it will amount to uh, fragmentation of the state boundary, which the center would also try to avoid as far as possible. Now, if the Nagas and the Kukis of Manipur feel that they are a minority and the Metis are uh, uh, overwhelmingly in majority, now the only possible way is that uh, for, the uh, for the economic development and certain autonomy on uh, administration, it is better for the Nagas of Manipur and Kukis of Manipur to join hands and fight for their rights. There's no harm as long as we stay together in Manipur. We feel that the tribal can uh, withstand the pressures of the Metis and that with our Mete brothers, we can sort out the economic development issues. This is so, what I feel. So, Mr. Mr. I'm running short of time. Uh, Mr. Haukip, so it's basically a question of enjoying the fruits of development. It's basically a question of political representation. Uh, do you think uh, there should be proportionate representation uh, or do you think there should be equal representation uh, irrespective of the population? Do you think that holds, that is, that can be one way to look at a solution, internal solution within the state of Manipur? Yes, I feel that uh, because recently the tribal population of Manipur has increased tremendously and it's almost, uh, I think it is 50, uh, 50, 40, the percentage of Metis being 50 and the uh, uh, cookies and tri uh, other tribes put together. Right. Maybe be around 48 and Metis may be 52. Now, if the government of India in its delimitation uh, effort can increase the number of seats for the tribal people. I think that will also try uh, do certain justice. Okay, because I think we will I think I have to more seats in the yes. That state is assembly. the key. What is emerged a very crucial point that is emerging now in this discussion is that uh, the key to the solution of the internal aspirations within Manipur is. The, the more political power to the tribal people, whether it is the Nagas or whether it is the Kukis and other smaller groups. And that will involve delimitation of constituencies, more seats in the Manipur assembly and more representation for the uh, Kukis and the uh, Nagas. Uh, Mr. Khuraiza Mathoma, is this a good idea because you are yourself demanding special status from Manipur? Would you, would you have any problems if there is more seats created within the state of Manipur, there is no dismemberment, the integrity remains, and then more power is given to the Nagas and the Kukis in Manipur? Yeah, well, <clears throat> see, Wasbir, we don't have any objection in that part. We only said, we only said that there should be a fair census, fair census headcount, then we will come out with a population ratio. Accordingly, the sheet share has to be increased or decreased in some ways. 
but you are so you are you are, you are you are you are not opposed it's a natural you are you, you are not opposed kuraiza uh, mathoba you no, are not no, we don't op you are not opposed to delimitation we don't no no we don't oppose why we the why we oppose in the recent delimitation is because that the basis of the delimitation the data that they are going to use is the you know it's totally false and it has been already okay. being nullified by the All right. department All right. that there was it was unfair so that's the only reason so once we okay. have a very Important. Uh, you know a fair census count in the coming days big then statement, we can we can go on with the delimitation big no big, issue. St big statement no coming issue in that big part. statement yeah. coming out from kokomi leader kuraiza mathoba conduct a fair census find out the real population ratio and go for delimitation uh, in the uh, in the right manner so kokomi has no problem in delimitation exercise if it is based on a fair census now last comments from you mr eluandang uh, generally what is being seen that you as you have said without integration there is no solution that means naga issue is going to linger for um, for a long time maybe longer than expected <coughs> I believe uh, government of India is sincere enough to resolve the matter. Repeatedly, we, uh, we have stated in your channel, but I think um, time is running. Time is running against us. Hopefully, with another new year, things should take shape. Absolutely. We all hope, we all hope uh, Northeast Live has been always saying that we want an acceptable solution to the Naga problem. While solving a problem, we should not create additional problems. Therefore, even if it takes time, there cannot be a time limit. Even if it takes time, there should be a solution that is acceptable to all. Uh, Mr. Teza Theri, is this the right moment for a solution to the Naga issue? Do you think issues like integration, flag, uh, and, uh, you know, our constitution for the Nagas can be discussed even after an accord is signed. Tezateri. Yes, accord is all about how to coexist peacefully. And even after accord, this process can go on. And our rights and our aspiration, nobody can come in between us. Right time. This, since the negotiation have to be brought to a logical conclusion, right. and solution which was promised to the people must come, and to give special status, autonomous status to the Naga people, I think okay. no one should be uh, uh, go against that. It will go against anybody's interest. It will not go against our neighbor, neighboring communities or even ethnic groups' interests. Absolutely. It is Absolutely, our Tezateri. interest and the interest of the All right. Northeast final, as a region. Final comments from you, Professor Javier Mao. 20 seconds to you. Yes, what's beer? Well, whatever some of the panelists have pointed out about the equal development, equal representation, all these are very necessary. But what is not sufficient in this point is that by nature, natural law is that whether animals or even human beings, the similar group wish to live together. Therefore, unless this basic aspiration of human being is met to the Nagas, that is integration, I think the solution will linger on. And then if it lingers on with the new changes of the China's emergence as the world number one superpower, they can also use the Naga fighter as proceed, proceed fighter against the government of India, which can also inflict heavy casualties, which may not okay, be good let's for not, the government uh, of let's India. Not go, yeah. Let's not go into all of those. Sure, sure. Uh, India is a superpower on its own right today. We are capable of dealing with this kind of external threats. But uh, basic point today is that, you know, uh, Naga Hoho uh, saying that without integration, 
of the Naga areas under one administrative umbrella, there can be no solution. And of course, uh, Manipur is emerging as holding the key to an early settlement to the Naga problem. And of course, what is uh, positive is that the Kokomi leader, uh, Kurai Zamatoba, saying that if there is a uh, common, uh, there is a fair census, they are not opposed to uh, uh, delimitation. At the end of the day, what is also emerging from what uh, Mr. Haukip has very rightly pointed out, the whole issue within, internal issue within Manipur is the uh, uh, lack of ad adequate power to the hill people. So proper representation uh, is not there. That is what uh, is the grievance as expressed by Mr. Haukip and others. I think these are issues that can be resolved with uh, delimitation. But this is not the end of the story. We are going to hear lots more on that. I thank all my panelists for participating in the program and the viewers for watching the show. Good Thank night. Thank you very and much. Good night. Was clear.